Hi, thanks for joining us here in the Friday Wrap with Pete and Reap. This is going to be like a wrap and a half. It is. Maybe, Maybe more. three. Maybe a wrap and, yeah, three wraps. <laughs> three wraps. Three wraps in one. Let's wrap it all up because I'll <laughs> tell you, you're going to be excited. For those of you waiting for the contest, we're going to tell you about that. Yeah. Uh, we were on the Joe Show. We were on the Joe Show a couple days ago, cooking yeah. up a storm. All of us were cooking. Yeah. I got in there. Yeah, you did. Who's the best garlic chopper in the world? <laughs> Well, you tried to. Yeah. Kept chopping and chopping. You know, it's almost like foiling when I was in the Olympics. It's a special <laughs> angle you got to chop that garlic You're out to get the so proper flavor, it. surface area. Oh yeah, you'll God. see it. Go watch the joke. I, did, I didn't notice you crushing it, though. You know, that, oh, no, that's not in, that in this. Do. Uh, in this one, you don't crush. No. No, you just have to sprinkle and let the you let it s go into the sauce and into the shrimp. <laughs> and we're standing there smelling our hands forever. You know what? It smells so it's good. Gone. Yeah. love the smell of garlic. Uh, Most, me a lot too. of people don't. But just not off breath. Yeah, and, and so on the Joe Show, there was a contest. Now, if you go to the Joe Show today, okay, and even after, you know, next week you can go to Joe's, you'll be able to see the show. Yeah. So I believe it's on today and Sunday, correct? Right. You'll see us cook up this gourmet meal and eat it. And we were in a contest. <laughs> yes, we were. Right? I knew, you, I'm never going to live this down, am I? No, we were in a contest. Now, I am so dead now. When the Joe Show... Uh, talk show video closed down. We were on the last show. Yeah. You beat me in a contest. Right. By one point. By one point. Okay. So, um, I believe this is down here. Yes, it is. Um, of course, you got I a got certificate, like, you an know, honorary the, certificate yeah, for being on the show. Yeah, runner up. But it was nice of Joe to give me my own. As you can see. But Pete won the contest. I won the contest. You're going to have to watch to see and what I... kind of contest. It was a, it was a grueling contest. <laughs> oh, it's grueling, yeah. Oh. Even even director John got in there. Uh, I think <laughs> I believe I won by five points. Yes, And over you, did. you it was seven. And the key to this whole contest is you are not going to believe how she lost. You are not, I swear you're not going to believe how she lost. <laughs> you have to watch it. I, I can't even still believe it myself. So, listen... Um, Niagara is getting the Summer Canada Games in yes. uh, 2021. 21, yeah. What do you think? Um, pfft, I don't care, truthfully. Um, I just think it's kind of a waste of time, to tell you the truth. Supposedly bringing in over 5,000 people or more. Yeah. Here's my opinion. I think it's great if we were all like wonderful and had all kinds of money and we were in the plus. I think it costs money. Now, the people who run businesses, it is great for you. You're going to fill up your hotels. It's only 18 days. Yeah. And people are going to have jobs. It's not like permanent jobs. So there'll be more jobs around. And then they're gone. And then they're gone. And they're talking about building a stadium. You know they're going to fix stuff up. And you know everywhere. But that's going to cost us money. Yeah. Everywhere games go, there's always a trail of money owed. Even when the Pan Am it's games never, were here. Never, never, never profits ever. Yeah. Except like you said, the hotels or whatever. So I hate to be, give it a downer. But I'm all about let's get our finances in order and stop spending money. Exactly. So. That's my opinion. Turn it away. Good work by the people who put it together. Because, I mean, that's tough competition. Oh, it is. And, you know, so we, we got it here in Niagara. <laughs> Did anybody else want it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of people up for the bids. Kitchen area and other places. Yeah. So. Anyways, if you're coming to Niagara in 2021, you'll be able to see You won't be able to get around anywhere. Because you can't days. now in the summertime. <laughs> no, it's going to be gridlock everywhere. It's going to be bad. They're building a new highway or something? Like, seriously, it's yeah. going to be bad. I doubt it. We don't want to do that because it'll cost us no, extra money. No, of course. Our taxes will go up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great show coming up. We do have a great show coming All right. up. Kim McDonald from the Weather Network, who's been there for years, the best, okay? Yeah. She was diagnosed with breast, breast cancer. cancer. We're going to see how she's doing, and that will be at the end of the show, so stay tuned for she's, that. She's inspiring. Yeah. She truly oh, is. She truly, she truly and honestly is. is. Yeah. But coming up next, mm -hmm. we have a big surprise. And the gentleman who's making this all happen just got out of the shop, so we'll have that. Oh, so is this, we're leading into the big, big, big contest? Yes. All right, can't wait. Stay with us here on the Pete Reed Friday Wrap. Thanks for staying with us here on the Friday Wrap with Pete and Reed. The big shoe. The big announcement. Yeah, we're supposed to be doing a, a, an amazing contest. Is this, there's got to be anything like this in Canada. I don't even think in the States. This is a one-off. and One time, just amazing. Isn't, is he? isn't he supposed to be here now? Yeah, we're supposed to have our special guest here. And 
Uh -oh. Is the contest still on? Uh, it better be. John? Yeah, we're just We've coming told... in from the shop. Just oh, it's just coming oh. in from the shop. Oh, okay. All right. All right, so okay. we got this great contest we're going to tell you about. Yeah. And, uh, oh. Uh, Lee? Lee. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Have a seat. Have a seat, Lee. I guess we just dragged you out of the shop. Yeah, sorry, guys. I was busy milling some wood. So, uh, Lee Hermosa is the owner of uh, Rancho Hermosa Custom Building in Stevensville, Ontario. Now, you're going to want to play close attention. I've worked with Lee. He's one of the most amazing craftsmen and builders okay, and renovators. Before we go further, I want to know what kind of employee was he? <laughs> oh, he was amazing. Amazing guy. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I believe that. that good. I, yeah. I mean, for me, I thought I was good. It was the I mean, fifteen-minute breaks there, every yeah. half hour. No, you know, no, that. I was a slave. I was, I was a slave. I hundred percent. If yeah. I have a team of Peters, I, I'd be rocking and rolling. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know anywhere near what he knows, but this guy does it all. And uh, recently, he got into cutting slabs. Now, explain what slabs are, where you found the stuff, where you're milling the stuff from. Well, what we started doing is. Um, is taking some of these giants that a lot of people cannot handle. So there's these enormous trees that have died and for whatever reason come down and there's no machinery out there that can, can mill them. So we did an investment on a huge chainsaw. It stands over seven feet tall <laughs> I've seen with, it. with, a, with an apparatus on it that allows us to plank whatever thickness at whatever width and then uh, turn these beautiful giants into works of art that people can appreciate inside their home. So if somebody has a tree on their property that, that it's that big, can they call you to come and say, Absolutely. hey, can you mill me a table or whatever? 100%. They, they can call us, contact us. We'll come to their property and mill it right on site. And the sizes and weight of these things, it, it has to be done right there and then. We're talking six, 7,000 pound trunks. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Now you love wood. Now he really does. He loves wood. Absolutely. And I mean, I've been with you and you, you're like, I mean, we're doing something. He's like, I go, Lee, what are you doing? What? Look at the grain. Look at, look at this. Yeah, I fall in love with it, piece. <laughs> can, Absolutely. Can you tell just by the smell of a piece of wood what kind of wood it is? I can tell by smell. I can tell by the leaves. I can tell by the bark. And I can tell by the grain. Oh, so, bad. yeah. But I've been taught by some of the best. It's amazing. And you have an absolute love for it, right? Oh, you have to have a passion for it. You have to honor these beauties, 100%. Now, the thing about you is when he does a renovation, when he does a deck, when he does anything he's doing, he is like the ultimate perfectionist. Everything has to be perfectly <laughs> square. Well, and if that doesn't work, I gotta check the square on the square. Thank you. So <laughs> it, it takes a little longer, but we it try. is certainly it we is try. certainly well that's it. what quality is all about though, right? Yeah. You know? hundred percent. That's what people contact us for. They want it done well, they want it done right. So we put our heart and soul into everything. Yeah, place. not shoddy work where you're gonna have to call somebody fix it a year later. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So um Lee and I have been friends for a long time. Yeah. Well, basically, we're family. I mean, 100%. Yeah. And uh, he has come up with a, an incredible prize. Yes, yes. You know, you could put a price on and say it's worth $3,000. I say it's worth more. More. Plus, yeah. of course, GST. <laughs> um, and he's donating it to the Pete and Reed show. We're going to do the final finishing on it, so we're going to have our hands on this custom piece, but give us a little not, uh, indication. Not of, in it. Yeah, no, no, on it. <laughs> okay, well, we had a, a silver maple, a spalton maple, giant, that had died and come down. It's been dead for quite a few years, and we only harvest dead or dying trees or municipal come downs. This, this beauty came from Niagara on the Lake. It's, uh, it was a massive trunk, about seven and a half feet long, um, with dazzling colors. We've milled it with a live edge, three inches thick. Uh, we've been sanding and planing it down for days now. So our next time, hopefully we get together in front of the camera, we'll be doing uh, a mineral oil reveal. So when once this oil is applied to this wood, we're going to literally, us and people on TV land, watch this wood come to life. Gonna light right. it up. See yeah, all the it's, grain. It's, and oh, it, but it's, uh, I specifically chose this piece of wood exactly for this reason, it is going to pop. It's going to be some of the most dazzling colors you've ever witnessed. And a lot of people don't get to see this type of wood. So it's exciting. So not only that, is, is it almost seven and a half feet long, but the same leg structure on this big timber slab <laughs> table is made out from the, um, the radius circumference of this trunk. Wow. So if you could envision, uh, uh, say this, hold this mug 
sideways. And if we cut that thing like bread, that first cut is a radius top, mm -hmm. flat bottom. Mm -hmm. That will become the leg structure of the same tree. So it's wow. going to be quite, quite impressive. So for people who don't know what a live edge is, what is it? Live edge is, say, conventional wood is, is milled um, in rectangular shapes where the live edge per se, which is part of the radius of the trunk or bark, if you will, is, is discarded. So live edge is, we're, we're milling giants, where we're incorporating that live edge, the radius of the tree, uh, that natural bevel shape into the profile of these slabs. So, Very nice. yeah, it's quite amazing. So how, how high will this table sit? Uh, I think we're gonna keep this one a conventional dining room table height, so maybe, maybe three foot finished. Wow. Yeah. And how long? Seven and a half feet long. Wow. Seven, well, that, three, inches, three inches thick. Wow. And approximately 30 inches wide. So how much do you think this is going to weigh? Well, the slab top, this one being as dry as it is, and a silver maple, which is on the lighter end of the spectrum, about 250 pounds the top, <laughs> and the legs included three, 350 pounds. Wow. So, and that's on the lighter end. Uh, if this was an oak or a black walnut, it can be... It's going to be a 450-pound slab, yeah. So. Wow. so this is going to be a piece like no art. other. Art. It's art. And, and just so you know, I mean, if you don't win this one, you can always contact Lee. And, and have, he can make you one. It'll be an original. It won't be like the one we have. <laughs> and it, it won't have us. Well, we might. You know, you never know. We might finish a few more They're all one of a kind. <laughs> yes. Every, well, every piece of wood is original, right? Exactly. Nothing's That's the same. people don't understand. Every single piece is a one-off. Yeah. We'll yeah. never see it again. And it was only first viewed when we milled it. Now, if you were to just buy the slab mm -hmm, from somebody, what would that be worth? Uh, well, that's probably the most economical for all your do-it-yourselfers out there. If they want to do your home project, uh, buy the slab. And you can configure whatever leg system. You can plane it yourself, sand it yourself, dry it yourself. Uh, brings down the cost immensely. Uh, or you can have people like us. Who will do all that for you? Put it together, create it, and then. But obviously, then it's a little bit more pricey. And mm -hmm. on top of that, you got to know what you're doing, and you right. got. I mean, you've yeah. got the eye for doing It'd it. Be and making it would be horrible. It'd be horrible if you got this beautiful piece of wood and you ruined it. And, yeah. then, and then you go. <laughs> right? People sit down and he goes, boom, yeah, yeah. and breaks your floor <laughs> right. and goes. <laughs> We've actually had clients call us and contact us and uh, and ask us if I buy this slab off you, will you teach us what to do? And we said absolutely. So. That being said, anybody that does pick up a slab of us, we will walk them through the process. It is uh, not that difficult and not that hard to do. Yeah. yeah. Now, I didn't realize it was going to be that high and it was going to be in your dining room. This table's worth a whole bunch um, more. Yeah. It, well, you know how gorgeous it would look? Oh, I... So, something this size uh, and someone... When, I don't want to give anything away yet, but th this would be in the thousands of dollars. Oh, yes. for sure. Yeah. I'm thinking five up. So there you go. Now we are giving this table away. Way. You're going to autograph underneath it, right? Yeah, we're going to brand it. Hopefully we're going to have a brand and, and, and brand our Rancho Hermosa custom building logo on there. And to add to the custom, we are finishing the top. We're yes. going to bring it to life at the end. Exactly. He's done all the hard work. We're going to do the easy work. But we're <laughs> Maybe gonna... we'll sign underneath. <laughs> yeah. We'll sign underneath. We'll sign underneath. 100%. You guys got to argue with yeah. it. You guys are celebrities. All right. So here's how it goes. You've got to go to the Pete and Reed Show Facebook page. Okay? So you just find it. Sign up if you haven't signed up. And then what's going to happen is you're going to go down, share, like, and put the comment in. The comment right. is, why would you like to have this table in your house, your cottage, in your... Uh, in, in your man hut. <laughs> <laughs> Too nice to put in a man cave. Too nice. You're dining right room. Dining way, room. Way above that. And then you got to go to the Pete and Reed YouTube channel. Okay. And when you go there, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And you have to do all of these things to be eligible. And like the Rancho yeah. Hermosa custom building. Yep. Absolutely. You're going to do that. So you're going to like and share on the uh, channel. And then you're going to get down in the comment section and say, I love the Pete and Reed show. Then they're going to go and like what you put up on the Rancho. That's right. So, and please go on to the Rancho Hermosa custom building page, just like us, and uh, and then follow Pete and Reed's rules. All right. So, six weeks from now, we're going to have a winner, and we're going to be going through the stages of how we do this. We're actually going to go out with you on a cut of a big, it's a big red oak we're going to be doing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, we're going to help cut that, and then we're going to finish off that table that you possibly are going to take home. Can you imagine? I I, I will. I want it myself. You can't. I know. No, darn. You're, not, you're ineligible. Okay, John's I quit. Ineligible. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the Pete show now. <laughs> Lee, you in? 
<laughs> Pete and <I'm> Lee. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for uh, bringing this on. Yeah, and, it's and amazing. It's amazing. such a pleasure. And we're going to have so you much. on many times. I can't wait to get out there and cut that tree down, which we're going to do quite soon, soon. actually. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. All right, we'll see you next week on the Friday Wrap. Actually, we're not wrapping, are we? No, no we're, we're not, not wrapping. wrapping at all. We are going to Kim McDonald. You, did, you, got, you just got so excited. I, well, you know what? I'm thinking, let's get this table and go home. <laughs> <laughs> Take it ourselves. <laughs> Kim McDonald is up next. She's going to talk about uh, her fight with cancer that she is winning. She's, She's so inspiring. She, she is a warrior, so stay tuned to that on the Beat and Read Friday Wrap. It's Pete and Reed here on the Friday Wrap, and we have special guest Kim McDonald from the Weather Network with us. Most famous Weather Network person, 19 years. I can't believe 19 it. 19 years. She started when she was 13. 19 <laughs> years at the Weather Network. Welcome. Thank you. Now listen Good to, to be here. Listen to how bubbly she is. Now, we talked to you back uh, late 2016, and you had gotten diagnosed with uh, breast cancer um, in November, I believe, right? December the 1st. Oh, was it December oh, 1st? Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, I got to see you ringing in a bell on Monday, I believe it was. And you know yeah. what? It gave me goosebumps and it gave me a little tear. Well, yeah, same here. <laughs> I bet. I got, to, I got to ring the chemo bell after 16 weeks. So, yeah, I had eight rounds of chemo. And uh, on your last day, you get to ring the bell, and I was uh, I was thrilled. So yeah, hurdle number one is over, and uh, I couldn't be happier that I I made it through. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. Every day I get a little bit better. So at, right after chemo, it was a little tough. I was uh, kind of down and out from Sunday till Tuesday, and uh, and then I start to rebound. So. I'm tired. I'm a little bit weak, but uh, other than that, I feel I feel pretty good, and I know that um, that's going to continue now for uh, a good month at least before I have my surgery. Now uh, you got good news too, right? I did have good news. Yeah, the chemo really is uh, working, and you know, I had an I had an MRI to start, and then I had an MRI uh, almost when I was finished, but I still had two chemo treatments to go, and uh, I was told that, and I didn't realize. To be quite honest, I didn't realize how large the tumor was beforehand, and I don't think anybody really wanted to tell me, and it's one of those things where it's okay after the fact, um, but during maybe it was a, a little bit too daunting. So I, I went from a, a tumor that was approximately 10 centimeters in diameter, which wow. is pretty massive. It was like 6 by 7 by 10. Um, so it was about the size of a tennis ball, and then uh, it shrunk to the size of a golf ball. So it went down to 4.3 centimeters in diameter. So it was, uh, yeah, I reacted very well to the chemotherapy um, leading up to the surgery. And so I was I was thrilled that it was all for uh, for something important and, it, and it's been working, so that's great. So for somebody who's never had chemo, what would you tell them like to expect? Um, you know, should, is there, you should be laying down a lot? You, like what what did you do? What helped you? Yeah, this is what I would tell them. It's not, you're not sick every day. You, um, I have two weeks between chemo. So um, I have about three really bad days, and then the rest is okay. And the, and the week leading up to chemo, I feel almost normal. Um, they have drugs for almost everything, every side effect that you can go through. Um, and, and so that helps, definitely. But uh, you can, you can uh, be prepared for a couple of, down days where you might not want to get out of bed or off the couch, uh, but it's it's doable. You know what I mean? Like you can you can do it, uh, and it's and it's not all terrible. So it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was pretty rough, um, and and yeah, they give you they give you drugs for nausea, for pain, all of all of the side effects that you may encounter: sleeplessness, heartburn. Like there's a lot of things that can happen. And uh, there are many side effects. I, I actually experience different side effects all the time. So, and I'd look it up and I'm like, yep, that's a side effect. So it's one of those things where different people can handle it differently. And, and uh, some people, you know, sail through and some people have a very hard time. So I guess it would depend on the individual. But you know that you're not going to be sick for 16 weeks. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. Which is kind of what I thought would happen but didn't. 
Now you actually uh, ha got screened, but they missed it, right? Yeah. So I had been getting screened almost um, uh, every six months ultrasound, but because uh, yeah, because my breasts were dense and I had bits, uh, I think that they missed it. Because how do you go from you know clear clean bill of health? supposedly, back in February of last year, to, uh, you know, a 10-centimeter tumor by December of the same year uh, without something going wrong, you know? And I think that because of the makeup of, of, of my breasts, um, the, t the cysts can hide the tumor. So dense breasts can hide cancer, which is why women with dense breasts have a higher risk of breast cancer than those without more so than, than any other, you know, like smoking or drinking or any of those things. Not more than genetics, possibly, but uh, it, it's a risk factor. Now, um, was it as bad as you thought it was going to be? Because, you know, there's people right now who are just, they're afraid to go and get checked. They're afraid to get the bad word. Then they're afraid mm -hmm. of what's going to be chemo. And then they're afraid of losing their hair. Mm -hmm. And then they're probably afraid of losing their breath, too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. A, you know, that's, that's a big thing too. So, um, you know what? I, I feel like for me, um, I, I, I faced the fear. I had the fear. I cried. I cried over the hair. I cried over the diagnosis. And then I got over it. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't stay down. It was like, um, I don't know. There's something about the human spirit. You just do what you have to do. It's how women have babies. You know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. you know, it, I mean, it's... <laughs> It's not going to be easy, but you can you can do it. And so those who are facing it, I feel like it's better to find out and face it head on and do something about it than to just wait and think, well, you know, I, I'm too afraid to find out if I have it. I found myself to be much in a much better place once I was doing something about it. Once I was, you know, I wanted to start chemo right away. I didn't want to wait until after Christmas. I was given that option. I just wanted to do it and get it over. Yeah, moving moving forward and knowing, I think, would be much better than not, you know. Yeah. And then and then years later, finding out, well, it's too late to do anything about it now. That's right. Yeah, you could get into that position where you've waited too long, and uh, there's not much they can do. I mean, the earlier you get in, I've always said this, uh, the better your chances. My my cousin has just been diagnosed, but her uh, her tumor was. I mean the. The cancer is still within the tumor, so that is the best possible, in my mind, prognosis, other than not having breast cancer. It's something called DCIS, which means that they remove the lump, you get radiation, and you're done. There's no chemotherapy, there's no mastectomy, and, you know, I mean, if you find that lump, you get, you get into the doctor right away. And then you can, you know, you can come out on the other side pretty quickly and, and not in the position that I'm in right now. Although I didn't wait, I can tell you that. It was just a very aggressive cancer, and I, and I think they missed it. So, you know what, i got to tell you something, and I know it. 60% of your recovery here is your attitude. And, I mean, Kim had great hair, okay? You had great hair. Great hair. <laughs> Thank but, you. But I you, thought so, too. <laughs> <laughs> you will again. Yeah. No, it's, it's already in growing stage right now. But, you know what, you looked amazing. Ball, too, that was surprising to me. Yeah, who knew, right? Yeah. I was, um, I'm okay with the bald, actually, right now. My husband thinks it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> he does. He thinks I look, uh, you know, kind of badass. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm all, uh, you know, I got used to it. At first, it was very hard to look in the mirror with the bald. Uh, you know, for me right now, it's harder losing things like eyelashes and, and the eyebrows are very thin. So the things that really change my face, it, that's difficult. But, you know, makeup can can fix that as well but yeah I have a pretty decent shaped head and I really didn't know I thought oh my god when this hair goes who knows what's going to be under there because I'm not sure oh Kim let me tell you oh. if, if my hair goes I'm in big trouble it's been bang <laughs> smashed oh boy it's not going to be there's good. lots of scars <laughs> under there <laughs> well we've got lots of wigs and hats and things like that to cover things up so you know if I have to go out in public I usually I'll, I'll throw something on at home I, I just usually go bald or if it's cool I'll put on like a scarf or something but uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's it's something not that bad. That's something you don't think about is that, you know, you have all this hair and yeah, your head would be cold all the time, I would imagine. Yeah. When you go out like I have a, a, a wig and then I put a hat on top of the wig and honestly, uh, I'm afraid sometimes if it's windy to go out like I would never go out without just a wig. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need is that way to go flying down the street and, you know, that'd be kind of embarrassing. But, yeah. 
so far so good. You know, I, I know you're uh, you're loved by all all your associates over there and your fellow uh, weathercasters. They love you. I know they do because I see it all the time. And I, yeah, I talk with you. They love you. And and your uh, your fans are crazy for you. When are you going back? Do you figure uh, you got a timeline on that? Yeah, I do have a timeline in my head. So you know, it, which would be about three months after treatment. Um, I'm I'm thinking October right now. So if all goes well, and I you know and I'm positive that things will go well for me, uh, that I will be cured of this disease by the time I'm finished um, surgery and radiation. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for October that mentally and physically I will be strong enough to return to work, maybe just on a part-time basis to start and then hopefully getting back into full swing as soon as you know, I'm able. Well, we'd love to keep in contact with you as you go through your surgery and stuff, you know, um, and let other people know exactly what it's like, if that's cool with you. Yeah, that's totally cool. I'm very open about this, and, and, that's, and that's why I went public, because, you know, if I can help other people get through this too, uh, or I'm relating to someone who, ha you know, maybe is a spouse of somebody with breast cancer, then, because uh, not everybody wants to talk about it, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm a, I'm a bit of a voice. So, yes, I'd be happy to talk to you. Well, thank you so much for your courage and your smiling face and, uh, and showing people that you can get through it, you can fight it, and you've got to do it, first of all, with great attitude, which you've got. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the only way as far as I'm concerned. You're going to have your bad days, but uh, as long as you get back up again, it's, it's, it's all good. All right. When it's all <laughs> said and done, you're coming down, you're going to be, we'll be live with you, okay? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can see my, uh, my cool hairstyle. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, God bless, Kim. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks, guys. Great to talk to you. All right. And uh, that's Kim McDonald from the Weather Network and getting through it. Oh, yeah. With a great attitude. Listen to her. Great voice. smile. Just, yeah. You can, you can hear the smile from here. <laughs> well, it's been a busy Friday wrap. It has. Yeah, don't forget to uh, get on and get to be a part of that contest, right? Oh, yeah. you got to like, share. Subscribe. Course, subscribe, but on the on the Facebook page, which is the Pete and Reed Show, you go on there and you write a comment of why you would like to have that amazing one-off piece of furniture in your house. Then you're going to go to YouTube, and you're going to go to the Pete and Reed promo, which means you, you've got to subscribe first if you haven't already. You're going to scroll through our videos. You're going to find the Pete and Reed promo, and at the bottom of that, you're going to write in a comment and share. You're going to put, I love the Pete and Reed Show. That qualifies you. Yeah, that qualifies you. So. And what a great item to be given away. I can't wait. It's so exciting. Oh, it and is? It's going to be in six weeks we give that away. So, anyways, thanks so much for joining us on the Friday Wrap. We will see you next week. God bless and have a great time. It's always so good. Absolutely the best. Uh, that piece of furniture. I don't want to give it away. I want to have it. <laughs> I want one. It wouldn't fit in my house, but you know, I might be able to get it in the door. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just saying, maybe. Help him cut a tree down or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do some play. Actually, we're going to be going.